Okay, guys, in this video, I will discuss about the design procedure of a stepped column. Okay, well, what is the stepped column and what are the different criteria you need to remember when you are designing a stepped column? Everything will be discussed in detail in this video. And before starting this video, if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay. So, before going into the detailing or the technical aspect, I just would like to wish you a very happy new year because today is the starting of 2023 and I wish you best of luck in this year and I wish that each and every one of you get your desire success in this 2023 itself. Okay. So, let's start. So, at the very first, if you are a beginner in that case, you might think that what is a stepped column? Well, normally we know that a column is simply uh, a body like this where you are applying some force like this and it has a uniform cross section throughout its length. Okay, But uh, when the structure become a little bit complex, in that case you may have to use a variable cross section uh, along this length. Okay. Here you can see that we are supporting a uh, gantry, okay. So, this is a gantry and this is the gantry girder. So, we are supporting this gantry girder over this column and you know there is a huge load that comes from a gantry girder. That is why the section is cross section is much higher and above this we also have a part of this column which is eventually being it is supporting some roof. Okay. In actual cases, you can see like this, here is the uh, perfect example. Okay. So, here you can see that this is the crane, overhead crane or the gantry and this is the rail which is supporting this crane. Okay. And at the bottom of this gantry girder, you can see the column section size is much higher, but above it, you can see here which is supporting this roof and it is also known as roof leg. It is a much more lower cross section. It has much more lower cross section compared to this bottom part. Okay. So, when you are going to design this type of a compound column or a stepped column, you need to or remember certain aspect. Okay. And this video is all about that. Okay. So, at the very first, what are the basic criteria you need to know whenever you are going to design any compressive member, okay. So, whenever you are going to design any compressive member, the first concept you need to know about is the buckling concept, okay. So, the based on this buckling concept, we design any compressive member or any column and you know that the design compressive set this is FCD, this is design compressive stress, it, if it is multiplied with the effective sectional area, then you got your design load, okay. Or if I uh, speak it reversely, in that case, if you have some design load and you need to find the required cross section, in that case, you first need to find out what is the allowable stress on the member right and you know that based on any codal provision based on this scale by r ratio or the slenderness ratio and the stress ill stress of the material you need to find out this fcd okay so let's say this is your column this is the support this is the support then if it is pinned joint then what is this length well, this is the length and based on the support condition, what is the value of this K? This is simply 1. Then what is the value of KL? It is coming as simply 1. Now, if you are suppose using some section, let us say IS MB 300. In that case, you will find the radius of gyration. So, if the radius of gyration is also known to you, then KL by R or the slenderness ratio is known to you. So, based on the L stress, let us say you are using 250 grade steel, then based on this slenderness ratio, 
your FCD or the design strength is coming is something like this. Let's say 150 or let's say 104. Everything is a function of your cylinder and ratio. Okay. So the basic thing that you need to know whenever you are going to design any stepped column, whether it is a single stepped or if it is a uh, double stepped, it does not matter. All you have to know is the effective length coefficient for each and every part. If it is known to you, in that case you can easily design each and every part of this stepped column. Okay? So, in this example, uh, gantry example, here you can see this is a single stepped column. Well, it is a single stepped column. So, in this single stepped column to design this bottom element okay, and this top element or the roof leg, what you have to know? You have to know two coefficient. Okay? So, the, for the bottom part, you have to find out the coefficient k1 and the l1 or this length okay? and for the top part or the roof leg, you have to find out the k2 and the length is known to you that is l2. So, once you have find out this k1 value and k2 value, you can easily design the sectional requirement based on the FCD or the uh, designed compressive stress, right? So, let us find out what are the forces or what are the factor you need to know to find out this K1 and K2. Simply, if you go to any code, here I am discussing based on IS 800-2007, okay? So, based on this code, you can simply if you follow the procedure, you can find out this K1 and K2 value. So, the very first step is you have to find out what is the force coming at this stop. And of course, this force is coming from the loading on the roof. This is the roof. And if let us say this is a truss or maybe some portal member or maybe some rafter. So, based on the reaction, you will get up the reaction force that is P2. And the second step is you have to find out what is the reaction coming from gantry. Well, if you analyze this gantry, definitely you will get some reaction and that reaction force is coming as let us say P1. Okay? So, if this is P2 and this is P1, what is the net reaction coming at the bottom? Well, very easy, P1 plus P2. Okay? So, the first step is covered. Now, now, what you have to do? Simply, let us say uh, this is your stepped column. In that, in this case, based on codal provision, you have to find out the edge restraint criteria. Okay. So there are normally four cases. Okay, for support condition. Now, which one is valid for your structure? If we consider this example, okay, at the top, definitely it is not fixed. So we can say that. At the top, the it is only supported against sway, but not against any rotation. But at the bottom, if we provide a moment connection, okay, in that case, we can say that the bottom is restrained against rotation. So, we will consider this case too. And in case 2, you can see that K1 to find K1 or this value for the bottom part, we have to use this formula. And for the K2, simply if we find K1, then by dividing that with value this C1, we can find out K2. Okay. So, here you can see that to find K1, it is a function of alpha. Okay, if you look closely to this formula K1, it is nothing but a function of alpha. And what is alpha? Alpha is simply the ratio of these two forces, reaction force and at the top the force which is coming. So, based on these forces, your effective length is going to be changed. Very interesting. Okay. 
So let's say here you can see that alpha is P1 plus P2 by P2. So P2 is the force at the top. So let's say if the reaction that is coming from the roof is very negligible in that case you need a very higher section because in that case k1 become very high okay and if you try to visualize this if p2 is almost zero in that case it is like this it is nothing but a cantilever column and you know for a cantilever section the deflection is very high in that case you need a very higher section okay this is a uh, just perspective to visualize the cases or you can say just a way to visualize how this formula has been generated okay and there is another factor well let me uh, clear all these things to find k1 it is also a function of k12 and k11 what are these things simply go to next slide here you can see that based on this sectional ratio okay so i2 is the moment of inertia or the cross section of the top part i1 for the bottom part and based on this ratio definitely for the roof leg we need less cross section so always i2 by i1 is going to be less than 1 normal cases and that is why here the values has been given up to the value of 1 so normally it is let us say 0.3 and also it is very natural that this top part length or this L2 is always less than L1. These are the practical cases and day to day basis we encounter this type of problem. Okay. So in that case also L2 by L1 is less than 1. So let us say this is 0.5. So if it is 0.3 it is 0.5 K12 is coming as 1.44 and k11 let's say it is coming as 0.8 okay so based on this value you have to find out actual k1 for this bottom part now what is the implication of this k12 and k11 well try to visualize that here you can see k12 means at this point gantry reaction is zero so if gantry reaction is zero you are actually trying to find out or you are actually trying to design this whole column based on this top load only and if p2 is zero in that case you are trying to design this column only based on gantry reaction okay and then you are simply trying to encounter all this force effect on the calculation of your effective length I am not going into the derivation part and honestly I also do not know how this equation has been derived. If I got any idea about this derivation part definitely I will try to make a video on that. And till now I am just trying to give you some uh, visualization about the end condition and the uh, force condition which affect the design part of a stepped column. Okay? So, if you like this video, don't forget to share it.